They call this the Flight of the Earls, a pop tune about emigration that's filling the airwaves of Ireland. So farewell, you boys and girls, another bloody flight of Earls. For today's Irish, getting into America is not what it used to be. Us Irish have been emigrating for as long as ever we've been here, like, you know, the Irish are everywhere all over the world. This is the first time in the history of Irish and American relations that Irish men and women have found themselves in America as illegal immigrants. It's a, it's, a, it's a new departure, sadly. For all but a very small number, hopes of staying in America legally are out of the question under present immigration laws. I'd rather do it, either do it right or not do it at all. So now, more than ever, thousands of capable Irish youth are squeezed between despair at home and illegal alien status abroad. A squeeze that's beginning to lead to confrontation between old and young, as we witnessed on the streets of Galway. Why do I stay? Uh, because I've just got into college and I want to get my degree and get out. But who paid for you to go to college? Your parents, is it? Yeah, my parents are just yeah. paying for me to go to college now. Why to get out of Ireland? Well, if I can get a job and get a family and rear a family and make money, well, then I'll stay. Not in your college education are easier in America. You're getting it here. So what, you should stay because yeah. you got it here? Yes, naturally. For what? For no other work? Well, he will get a job, doesn't he? No. Possibly will get a get job. It. They all want to leave Ireland. All want to leave Ireland. And it bothers you? Yeah, it bothers me, certainly it does. Decisions made here 20 years ago are at the root of today's problems in the Emerald Isle. Heavy borrowing by the government on oil prospects that came to nothing and a 60s baby boom. All of these have resulted in an economy where only one person in five has a job and taxes are 60% and more. Many blame the government. The government here don't want to do anything. They don't want to know or hear about immigration. They will, they're trying to con us. They give us wrong figures. Oh, they answer as we always do. I think our industrial policy was very badly managed for, for years and years. Even those with the highest qualifications feel unprotected. It's estimated that 2,000 engineering graduates have left this country in the last three years. I think more and more it's beginning to affect people at every level. Nowadays, even if you have a degree, it's no guarantee that you're going to get a job in this country. On the Late Late Show, Ireland's version of Johnny Carson, immigration is a hot, hot topic. So much so that I was an invited guest of host Gay Byrne to talk about it. Chris, are you examining Irish attitudes here to immigration? Or, We're trying to discover why, why is this happening. What? what we're hearing is how bad it is, but nobody knows how to fix it or exactly what's causing it, other than big debt, no jobs, and that there's nothing for them to stay home for. Even youngsters still in high school see no relief inside for them. How many of you see yourselves emigrating to make a living? The reason why people are emigrating is to get the country back on its feet. You're going to have to ask a generation of people, this generation, to work hard and take heavy taxation so that the next generation will have a better life. That's an awful lot to ask. Well, I don't know if even I'd be willing to give up that much. So it may be heading for the high seas, huh? Maybe. Manhattan is the next island, 3,000 miles that way. But on this island, the big fear is what will happen if all the illegal Irish aliens are sent back? If the American dream is closed out of the Irish now, then Ireland may wake up to a terrible nightmare. Another bloody flight of Earth. For 16 decades, when America's doors were virtually wide open to the world, 52 million immigrants came through. Nearly one in 10 were Irish. Now the tearful farewells take place at Shannon Airport. More than 150,000 of them in just the last three years. But for the first time, most are illegal aliens, outlaws in America. The Irish call this the New Ellis Island. It's the American Embassy in Dublin, where all day, every day, people from all over Ireland line up. It's their first step in pursuit of the American dream. In a few years' time, there's not going to be as much people in Ireland. Like when the Great Famine was years ago, the people left to America. It's not the potato famine that's driving the Irish to America this time, but an economy in shambles, with unemployment exceeding 25%. Ireland has the youngest population in all of Europe. Fully 50% of them are under the age of 25. 
They are also the best educated and most job skilled generation Ireland has ever produced. But all that promise has little place here, where the busiest offices in the country are social welfare offices. Many of the young people that are working are on government sponsored schemes that only last a year. So that's why so many are emigrating. There's just nothing. Virtually no chance of getting a job here, you know. In times of trouble, the Irish have always looked to America. Most of them still do. Some of the luckier ones still can. In fact, for someone like Cynthia Gosker, a registered nurse, America comes to her. Why is there such a shortage of nurses in, in the United States? The nursing shortage in America brings recruiters like these from a bridge to New Jersey hospital to Ireland. They're offering a legal way out. What's in it for us, obviously, is that we need the nursing badly and we're able to recruit qualified, excellently trained nurses. And uh, what's in it for them is that they can come legally with the promise of employment, with the capacity to uh, become American citizens if they so choose to do that. Do you want a piece of jam, Thank you. Thank you. No. Yes. Cynthia's decision will be a wrenching one for the whole family. That is, things are here in the Emerald Isle. It's a very hard place to leave, harder still to forget. I think there's an Irish dream as well. But I, I think in the, its present state, Ireland cannot fulfill that dream for any young people here. Granny! But it's hardest of all on those left behind, the, uh, Cynthia's parents. I don't think you could find a better place to live in the sense that uh, to rear children and uh, not to be too much afraid of things that might happen to them or to yourself, you know. In that sense, like, I, well, we wouldn't leave it, would we? No. You know. You wouldn't need that. Yeah, but but you can, can understand the kids. I can, oh, I can understand, understand them going, are you? Try to stop them going there. Still, Cynthia is one of the lucky ones. She has choices. Maybe luckier still are these ecstatic young Irish outside the American Embassy. You would think they just won the Irish sweepstakes. Michael Hammond. What they have won is legal entry to the United States. American visas drawn by lottery. For me now, going over, it is a new beginning. It is the thing like... To go. It's a chance. I mean, it's a chance to make a life for me. It gives me a whole new outlook on the life, really. Yeah. And what I, can, what I can really do now. Ireland is one of 36 countries the U.S. State Department says is discriminated against under current immigration laws. That's why they allowed a one-time lottery for 10,000 visas spread among those countries. That news drew banner headlines in Ireland. What did you have to do to win this? Uh, well, between me and my aunt over in the States, we sent in about 400 applications. So many Irish responded, they won one-third of the visas. But legal or not, it's at the airport that the painful reality of emigration really hits home. I miss everyone, friends, family, everyone. But at least I'm legal. I don't have to worry about coming back in and out. I'm not going to be running away, hiding from television cameras. <laughs> This is a woman who lives her every day in fear. She comes from Belfast, Northern Ireland, to America, seeking a better life for her children, even if she has to do it illegally. It's not a natural thing for me to do something that's illegal. You know, I mean, I don't do it with ease. I don't do it, uh, oh, you know, this is going to be it. I'm just going to do this and to hell with everybody. She came here two years ago with her husband and two young daughters, expecting to become legal through relatives here. That didn't work out. But by then, they didn't want to go back to what they'd left, Belfast war and unemployment. Here I saw that there were opportunities, there were things that, that my own kids could achieve, that, you know, that I could give them some kind of future. This is one family among the 150,000 Irish illegals all arrived in the last three years, but to a different America than those who came before them. 20 years ago, I left this city of Limerick myself for America. But in the 60s and 70s, times were good in this country, and very few people had to leave. And that's exactly the crux of the problem for today's Irish trying to get into America. I would love to have the chance to be a member of this society, to give my kids the American way of life. America now issues 270,000 immigrant visas worldwide each year. The bulk of them go to immediate relatives of families already living here.
For a prosperous Europe, the immigrant family chain in America was broken in the last two decades. That's why today's Irish are having such a hard time. This is Gaelic Park in New York, where every Sunday the Irish come to celebrate their national sport of hurling. And the growing numbers here only goes to show how many new Irish are arriving. Only 730 Irish citizens were issued immigrant visas last year, but tens of thousands of others are simply taking their chances. The crowds are almost as big as they were when I came here in 52. We had a better opportunity to come out. We were legal. Now, I suppose 85% of them are here are illegal, and they're having a tougher time. You know, they've been exploited, they are being exploited, but at least they're making a living. We recently assembled a group trying to do something about immigration reform, some of whom are themselves illegal. You know, it's not just the Irish Americans that make you feel welcome, it seems to be everybody. They tell you keep talking because they love your accent. <laughs> <laughs> Especially on St. Patrick's Day, it really hits home very hard. You watch everybody marching down Fifth Avenue, we've been so proud to be Irish. It's like we're here, you know, as genuinely Irish as you can get, and we're like second-class citizens. We can't even, you know, open up as simple as a bank account. Most illegal aliens don't feel they're doing anything wrong. They see jobs open all around them. They're here to work. Some seek justification in the past. The U.S. Congressional Medal of Honor has been awarded 3,412 times. It has been won over 2,000 times by servicemen of Irish background. It has been won 255 times by native-born Irishmen. And I think that the contribution that our forefathers have made to this country surely earns for us the right, their children, to be legally in this country. I don't see why they should be discriminated against. And I wish that uh, more Americans would be involved in this and would uh, help us in this goal. The goal of immigration reform has its sympathizers at many levels, including the United States Ambassador to Ireland, Margaret Heckler. I see a great love of America here, a country with uh, young people who are extremely well educated, a great deal of talent, who do not find an opportunity in their own society. And these are people who could make a great contribution to America. When you look at the numbers, in another five years, the number of Irish who are eligible will be less. I mean, you're looking at the last of the Irish in the United States. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Okay. Congratulations. Thank you. You see a world of beaming faces these days at immigration legalization centers all over America. Thank okay. you so much. That's my favorite day. Although it's no longer a green card, that's still how these brand new legal residents of the United States still refer to it thanks to the new amnesty for illegal aliens signed into law last year. Is that the big thing? You, you don't have to be afraid anymore. No, no. you are not afraid anymore. <laughs> the green card, in a word, means freedom. Freedom from fear of deportation, freedom to visit homeland and family, and a green light to go ahead and make money. I can uh, work where my line is. I'm a college graduate and my husband's a college graduate. But no more minimum wage factory jobs for the Benemeritos. Soon she'll be back to teaching he'll resume accounting. It's good for me. <laughs> for me, it's important, very important. For Blanca Rosa Hinkeby from Colombia, it's the weight of many years of fear off her mind. With this kind of relief available, you would think that every illegal alien in the land would be rushing in here. When it comes to the numbers of illegal aliens of all nationalities in the country, nobody knows for sure how many there are. But so far in the amnesty program, of those eligible to receive it, only about half have come forward. And the big reason is fear. They think that the information, the questions that we're going to ask them, is going to somewhere along the line find out where they've been, who their family are, and that immigration is eventually going to go out there and arrest their family, which is a fallacy. Anyone who can prove continuous illegal alien residence since before 1982 can get amnesty. But there are some catches. Kathleen Reagan has been here illegally for 14 years and can prove it. But that may not be enough for INS. Just the thought of coming down here for legalization scares me. I decided I'm entitled to this amnesty. 
and I should fight for it. I believe that I'm here almost 15 years and I'm entitled to it. Kathleen went home just once in those years for a family wedding. She was away for more than 45 days and coming back into America on a new visa, technically she broke her illegal status temporarily. We hear the INS advising people to come forward constantly and uh, that, that was my advice to Kathleen. Kathleen is trusting that INS will look to the spirit rather than the letter of the law. And you have to... Everything is okay. Just one thing. Yeah, yes. you live, right? <laughs> Up to last Friday, almost 700,000 illegal aliens have applied nationwide for amnesty, plus 145,000 agricultural workers. So far, INS is approving about 93% of them. With so much at stake, some illegals are paying up to $1,000 to attorneys to see them through the process, while others are getting help free from people like Sister Regis, who's too modest to talk about it. I had her birth certificate like this. She works out of one of the many church and community centers INS has approved to help applicants. What's going to get the rest of the people in complete faith in immigration? If you don't come in here and say, I've got a problem, can you help me? We'll never know. We'll never be able to help you unless you come here. For most illegal aliens, it's money, not citizenship, that first lures them to America. It's often to support a family left behind. This man doesn't want to be identified because he has left his wife and two children behind in Poland. The uh, situation in Poland is really hard. You know, people work, no money. He's earning his money at this metropolitan area work site, among a veritable United Nations of fellow workers. But under the new immigration law, this man's chances of continuing to find work have taken a nosedive. Besides amnesty, there's another more controversial side to the immigration reforms of 1986. Now, for the first time ever, all employers are required to seek proof of legal residence for all new employees. These employer sanctions are causing major anxieties among all illegal aliens now residing in the United States. Oh, <laughs> I think that's going to be really hard to find a job. That's all. If I would know in Poland, I never would come to America. I anticipate there will be less illegal aliens employed in the United States. We hope that these jobs will be made available to citizens of the United States and those with permission to work. Not everyone sees employer sanctions working out this way. There is the question whether Americans will take the kinds of jobs now filled by illegals at any price especially in the labor-intensive industries, from construction to restaurants to domestics. Good help would be very hard to come by because most of the Americans don't want to work in the construction. Because basically they want to work in something that's a cleaner job. Certainly, there are instances of employers exploiting illegal aliens, but in many cases the arrangement works both ways. I can make a week same money Almost same money like a year in Poland. A year? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There seems little resentment factor from their better paid fellow American workers, provided there are enough jobs to go around. No, they're human beings. I mean, I understand that they come over from another country, the laws, they have to get green cards and all that, but I don't see nothing wrong with them coming over here and making money for their families. Yeah, they're just, they're just working, you know? The INS says employer sanctions are already reducing the numbers of illegals coming across the borders. But if the sanctions drive out too many illegals, our own economy might also feel the pinch. The number of persons in the entering the job market in this country drops by a quarter between now and the year 2000. We have, we have room. So, the illegals of the last five years are heard twice by the new Immigration Act. No amnesty and a tighter job squeeze. This is the plight of the latest Irish immigrants, among others. Illegals who have a high level of sympathy in the United States, but little hope for immediate relief from either side of the Atlantic. Recently, Ireland's own foreign affairs minister visited New York. Under pressure from Irish immigrants here, he came to assess their situation firsthand. We would require twice the present rate of investment to employ all our young people at home. And that's the sort of target we have to seek to achieve. But side by side with that, we have a duty, a bounden duty, uh, to help uh, those people uh, who, uh, who do immigrate. The old Irish or 
groups I would hope might get interested, the, the, the Hibernians and the friendly sons, for that matter. And absent a serious effort concentrated on this and leaving politics aside on other matters, nothing is likely to happen for quite a while. Until then, for thousands banished from a land of beauty, trying to find a home in this land of power, their address must remain no man's land. What if we see better days? Those bigger 